Hello, my name is Don Dapkus, and I'm the Applications Engineering Manager for our Audio Power Amplifiers here at Texas Instruments. Today I'm coming at to you from our audio laboratory, and I wanted to discuss with you a problem that we get a lot of customers have. That problem is how to measure the output of one of our filter-free Class D devices. It's a little bit tricky because the filter-free Class D device does not require an output low-pass low filter of an LC like most Class D amplifiers. It makes it a little bit tricky to measure the output because now you're not measuring at the output a audio uh, signal, you're actually measuring a 250 kilohertz square wave. So I'll show you a way to overcome that so that you can recover back the audio signal that you're trying to view. Before we look at the demo, let's first talk about a Class D amplifier. So I have a block diagram that I prepared for this discussion. All right, so here's a block diagram for a typical Class D amplifier. So the audio signal is applied at the input over on the left-hand side here, marked V in. The audio signal is then fed to a programmable gain amplifier, which we use to adjust the gain in our devices. At the output of that, the audio signal goes to an integrator where the feedback signal and the audio input signal are integrated together. The reason we have this block in the circuit is this is what gives us the feedback for a closed-loop Class D amplifier. The feedback helps us greatly with our power supply rejection, so it allows us to achieve greater than 60 dB of power supply rejection, which is very difficult for an open loop Class D device to accomplish. At the output of that integrator, it then goes into a high speed comparator, which compares the audio signal coming in here to a 250 kilohertz triangle waveform, which is generated on chip. The output of that comparator changes state every time the audio signal crosses that 250 kilohertz signal. That is then fed into some PWM logic and great gate drive circuits, which drive a full H-bridge of power MOSFETs, which are also inside of our devices. The output of those H-bridges, of that H-bridge, is then connected to the speaker. So if you try to measure the signal going into the speaker here, it will be, cause some difficulty because you will see 250 kilohertz switching waveforms instead of, say, a 1 kilohertz sine wave that you're inputting to the input. So that's the basic operation of one of our Class D amplifiers. Let's now move on to the demo, and we can actually see this in action. Okay. And ready. All right, so here I have one of our Class D amplifiers this is actually the EVM for the TPA 2013D1, which is a 2.8 watt Class D amplifier. This device is designed for portable applications which are powered from lithium ion batteries. The feature that this part has is it has an integrated DC to DC converter, which allows you to boost the typical voltage from the lithium ion battery up to a user programmable level of anywhere from 3.6 to 5.5 volts. This allows you to achieve much greater swing on your speaker, allowing you to achieve much more output power. As I said, for a 3.6 volt input, we can achieve 2.8 watts into a 4 ohm speaker, which is very nice. So then the output of the EVM, I have connected the oscilloscope probe so that we can look at the signal at the output of the EVM. I also have that connected to a 8 ohm power resistor and connected to that I have this filter box which we use a lot in our lab here at TI. It's basically just a very simple RC low pass filter. So it has a 1 kil kilo ohm resistor in series and then a, a 4.7 nanofarad capacitor to ground. That gives you about a 30 kilohertz low pass filter which the output of that is then fed directly into the AP, and I also have it connected to my oscilloscope so we can look at the pictures there. All right, so that describes the demo that I have set up down here. So now let's look at some of the waveforms on the oscilloscope. So right now I will turn on channel 3. So this is the output waveform from our Class D amplifier. The time base is set at 1 microsecond per division, so this signal corresponds to a, a 250 kilohertz uh, uh, square wave at 50% duty cycle. Since our amplifier is fully differential or bridge tied load, as we like to call it, let me turn the second output on as well. So these are the two outputs of the amplifier. Both are running at 50% duty cycle, and you can see that the signals 
if we look at it differentially. These signals are, since they're completely in phase, when you measure it differentially on M1, there is no, uh, no content in that signal. Now, if I apply a 0.5 volt RMS 1 kilohertz sine wave to the amplifier, we can now see that the both outputs start changing and the differential signal is changing as well. So the differential signal here is representative of the audio signal that's being transmitted to the speaker. So right now I don't have any low pass filter between the class D amplifier and the load. So this is the only waveform that we can see. And if we change uh, the time scale, if we change the time scale, you can kind of see a sine wave on the differential signal, but it's a little bit difficult to see. So now let's change, and instead of looking at directly at the output of the device, let's look at the output of the RC low pass filter which is what I have applied to the input of the audio precision. So then I will turn on the two signals. And actually, let's before I do that, let's go back to this signal. So this was the signal that we were driving. So now let me turn that off and go back to the filtered one. And we can see here that the filtered signal actually has some ripple on it left over from the 250 kilohertz. And of course that's because the RC low pass filter doesn't provide a lot of attenuation, so it, it basically converts that square wave into this triangle wave. Now if I change the time base, we can see that it starts to look a lot like it starts to look a lot like a sine wave. Let me trigger on that. Okay, so we have that. That's one output. That's the second output. So you can see that those are 180 degrees out of phase. So that gives us twice as much voltage swing on the output of the amplifier, which when you use the power equation, V is the voltage is squared. So this allows us to get four times more output power. Now if we look at the differential signal, we can see that it looks very clean. I'll turn these off so we can focus on this one. So you can see here, it looks, uh, it looks like a very clean one kilohertz sine wave. So you could use this in your lab. Um, you can feed this into your audio precision or other analyzers. Um, you can use this on the production line for your production test people to look at the output of the amplifier to make sure it's working correctly. The problem that we're trying to solve here is the output of the Class D amplifier has 250 kilohertz square waves. If you try to look at that on your oscilloscope, it's very difficult to see the audio signal. If you try to feed that into your audio analyzer, uh, most audio analyzers have an input slew rate limitation that that 250 kilohertz will cause problems and you'll end up with, with uh, incorrect readings. So by the addition of the simple low pass filter in between your load and the audio measuring equipment or your oscilloscope, it can allow you to very easily measure the output of our Class D amplifier. In this example, I have used a, a RC low pass filter consisting of a 1 kilo ohm resistor in series with the signal, and then it has a 4.7 nanofarad capacitor to ground, which gives you a 30 kilohertz cutoff frequency. So I hope that this video has been useful for you. We have loaded um, this video on our audio forum, and you can give me feedback for the video there. You can also ask questions about the video or any questions about any of our devices or audio in general. And we also have loaded up their FAQs so that you can look and see other commonly asked questions that people have. Thank you very much for your time and have a great day.